Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how you doing? It's Big P here. The voice of hardcore boxing, you know that don't you? If you don't know already, well you've not been watching the channel have you? So my advice is, like and subscribe and get on the Porky Express. I just find my way out here now, where am I here? Oh you're down here. I'm just leaving Mick Wales house, sat in bottom at garden with him, having a cuppa. Interesting chat about boxing. I think it's this way in it. A lot of speed ramps around here. It's like an obstacle course. Uh, some interesting things lined up. We just need this virus to go away, don't we? But things are looking really, 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 really good. The talk of the town, fish and chips. Wish I could keep some fish down me and some chips. Uh, right then. This week Kovalev. And who he's going to fight next. You see, this is an argument with boxing, in my opinion. Guys at top end at table, they don't want to have tough fights, do they? I mean, I keep hearing Oscar De La Roy say, nobody wants to fight Canelo. What lies? What lies? Yeah, Billy Joe might have pulled that, because he wants to be right, doesn't he, when he does fight him. John Ryder will take that fight in a heartbeat. Callum Smith will take that fight in a heartbeat. Baturbia or beat a beef or whatever you want to call him are to beat a beef 15 and 0 age 35 biggest puncher in world boxing only world champion that's knocked everybody out that he's fought he will take that fight in a heartbeat so will Bivol so will John Pascal who's a world champion still a world champion John Pascal 12 years after he fought Carl Froch now, if they'll take the fight, why is Oscar De La Hoya saying nobody wants to fight Canelo? Why is that? This way. Why is Oscar De La Hoya saying that? People are queuing up to fight Canelo, but they've got to be paid, haven't they? Do you know what I mean? But why, why is Jason Quigley in, in, in the running for that fight? He shouldn't be nowhere near that fight. His level's Marcus Morrison. He's a middleweight. And like I've just said, his level is Marcus Morrison. Now if we put Marcus Morrison in the mix to fight Canelo now, there'd be uproar, wouldn't there? So let's back up a bit and have a look at what the word uproar means. Kelbrook against Golovkin. A ten and a half stone fighter going in against eleven stone six fighter. Well to eight, ten stone seven. Light middle, eleven stone. Middle, eleven stone six. Why would a well to eight jump up two weights to fight a killer? A killer middleweight with the record for the most knockouts in world title fights at that weight in his 20 defences. He didn't fumble his way to wins like Bernard Hopkins. He were knocking people out. So I'll come right away here. Yeah. So that's how I look at it. I mean, look. Do you remember when Pauli Malignaggi beat Senchenko? You remember that, don't you? Right. So Pauli Malignaggi beat Senchenko. He's the 147 pound world champion. If we had said to Pauli Malignaggi, you're a welterweight champion, go and fight Golovkin. People would have been accusing the promoters of trying to cause a conspiracy to have somebody murdered. But yet when Kel Brook fought Golovkin, everybody was saying Kel Brook's a beast and that he's really a super middle fighting at middle. So why was it good for Kel Brook to fight Golovkin? And why did nobody get any stick about it? But yet, they would have done if Pauli Malignaggi had fought Golovkin. I'll tell you why, shall I? Because Kel Brook's promoter, Eddie Hearn, had the platform to go on IFL, to go on Sky, to go on all them other YouTube channels that hang out of the back of him 
he's got the profile, Eddie and Annie, and he's got the contacts to to feed us fake news. Oh, Kel Brook's a beast. He's really a middleweight super middle. Boiled down, don't matter. He's a ten stone seven, ten stone seven pound world champion. Fighting a big middleweight who's thirteen pound heavier. So let's look at it like this, right? Golovkin under the sixty pound. If we put him in with Golovkin, if we put him in with Beta Beef, who's a one seven five guy, and we made Beta Beef come down two pounds, and he could do. That's thirteen pound. Everybody would say that was suicide, wouldn't they? But yet, when Kel Brook fought Golovkin, we were talking about it being a great fight, weren't we, between two champions? Look, let me just point this out to you. We have weight divisions for a reason. And do you know what that reason's called? And this is why British Boxing Board of Control have got the best record with safety. We have weight divisions for safety reasons. Safety reasons, so that people are safe and they get home to the family like Tony Bellio. Safety reasons, right? And what happened? What happened? Everything I said come true, didn't it? Kel Brook got his eye, eye socket smashed in on one side and had to have an operation. And on the other side, he got it half damaged. And in his next fight, he had to drop back down 13 pounds and Errol Spence finished other eye off. And he quit. So in two fights, two quit jobs. That's what happens when you put protected fighters in with killers. But if I say anything, you know what they say, don't you? Porky, you're a hater! You're a hater, you're bitter, you're jealous! I'm not jealous, I just want what's best for fighters. Kel Brook shouldn't have been nowhere near Glofkin, and he certainly shouldn't have been nowhere near Errol Spence. He should have took some time out. Or pulled out with an injury with a week to go and rescheduled it to give him more time to recover with his injuries. But when you've got millions in front of you dangling and you've got people in your ear hole and up your arsehole telling you you're a beast and you do an interview saying your eyes are stronger than ever because people are filling you full of crap. And what's Kel Brook done since then? Finished, washed up. Blown up like Michelin, Michelin man, isn't he? Fat as a pig, Michelin man. Like that, finished. Never been the same fighter again. Could have been our greatest ever welterweight. Back up a little bit even further. Back up even further. Would you put, would you put Lloyd Unigan in with Marvin Agler? Lloyd Unigan did more than Kelbrook ever did, he was undisputed welterweight, so even better and undefeated at the time like Kel, would you put him in with Marvin Hagler? Would you? Would you heck? You wouldn't do it, would you? So why Kelbrook in with Golovkin? Why? Hey? Eh? Why Jason Quigley in with Canelo? Canelo's a killer 175! Killer! Canelo's, Canelo's just knocked out a guy at 175, right? Who couldn't budge him? So if you can't budge him, what's Jason Quigley going to do to him? He's not going to knock him out. And is he going to get a decision on points? No. And why should we have Canelo holding ransom 160, 168, 175? Why should he be allowed to hold them divisions to ransom? because it's biggest name in sport, but what's going on is wrong, isn't it? You follow it, mate. We pull up here, it could be old Bill, that. Got to be careful, aren't ya? Could be some of these trolls, couldn't it? Could be some of these trolls wanting to piss me off. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Let's have a bit of music. Here we are, a bit of Snoop. Right, like Snoop Doggy Dog. Ah, 
I'm into the chronic at the moment, about 27 year old in it, Dr. Dre. But but no, listen, boxing's got to change. If a fighter, right, is area level, he's got to fight somebody area level. Jason Quigley is English level. So he's got to fight somebody English level, hasn't he? If Martin Murray comes back, go fight him because he's on slide, isn't he? English level. He's on slide. He's fought at world level. He's Go fight somebody on your level at that time. Don't go fight somebody at elite level if you're English level, cos that's how accidents happen. That's how Kel Brook getting his eye, cut, eye socket smashed in and his career virtually over. That's what happens when you've got plant pots giving, out, giving you advice and greedy people. Nobody's going to say it like I'm saying it, are they? And if anybody's got a problem, you know what you can do. Come and see me. Anybody out of Kelbrook's team got a problem, come and knock on the door. Or come and knock at gym when I train. Come and see me if you've got a problem what I'm saying. Because you know it's true. And all your pals around you know it's true. But they're not going to say, are they? They're not going to say dicky. They're not going to do diddly squat. They're not going to say dicky. Do you know what I mean? And I've won money with Kelbrook at Bucky's. Because he's a fantastic fighter, but... Sometimes fighters, they need saving from themselves. They shouldn't be put in a situation where they're asked to fight somebody who's a lot bigger than them, stronger than them. Because this is why we have 17 weight divisions. For example, you're not going to get Tommy Franks from Sheffield fighting... What have we got here? This is what you're getting, Max, but look at this. Please, all over the place. You're not going to get Tommy Frank fighting Tyson Fury, are you? Why is not? Why not? Because eight stone men don't fight 19 stone men, do they? Why is that? Because they're in different weight divisions. We've got it all street out here. There must be a lot of prams are. I like to know what's going on in the area. Some fresh air in here. I smell, I can smell kebab and chips. Must be near Mexpra. But like I said, fighters are not superheroes. So, and how many fighters move up in weight and then come back down in weight and win? Not many, do they? It's very rare that a fighter moves up in weight and comes down and wins. But it is what it is, isn't it? So, but, getting on for fighters for, for Canelo, Anthony Yard, Anthony Yard, good time here, Anthony Yard's a good fight, and he? he's just lost to Kovalev, Canelo's just beat Kovalev, why not put Yard in and nearly, and nearly knock Kovalev out, Anthony Yard, Bivol, Callum Smith, John Ryder, they're all great fights for Canelo, John Pascal, there's some names there for you. Why would Canelo want to be picking off Quigley? It's wrong, man. Whoever's advising Quigley, whether it's his trainer or whoever, whoever's advising them, you should hang your head in shame because you're going to finish the kid off. And once you finish the kid off, he's no good, isn't he? Now, all them people who will be patting Quigley aren't back. Let's say he fights Canelo. All them people that are going to be patting him on back, saying you can do him if you, you you could take you could drown him in later rounds. I mean, I mean, I couldn't even beat Canelo, the great Canelo, a four-weight world champion. They're probably going to say something like, "Well, you could take him late on and save it for late on and drown him in 11th or 12th or I don't know. Maybe Canelo might fall over and break his leg in ring or somewhere. I don't know. I'll break his ankle. I don't know what what game plan you'd have to beat Canelo. I don't. Maybe they could sell it as it's an opportunity and who, who are they to say that he shouldn't be fighting so-and-so and so-and-so. And so. I don't know, but it is good life-changing money for him, but it'll be life-changing in his career as well because he'll need that money to retire because fighters are never the same after Canelo's for him, are they really? Is Quigley a Floyd Mayweather who was the only person to beat Canelo on points? 
Can Quigley do what Mayweather did for 12 rounds? Can he do that? Because Mayweather couldn't get him out there, could he? Is Quigley Floyd Mayweather? No. So why don't the people handling Quigley go through the levels, let him learn his craft? He's only a kid. Why do that? Why put him in with Canelo at this stage of the game? You're going to spoil him, aren't you? That's just my opinion. Bulky, you're a hater! Bulky, you're a hater! You can't say that! It is what it is, isn't it? So, alright. So, peace out, keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing. Looks like it's gonna rain. So, alright. Shout out to Mick Wales gym opening next week. Looking forward to it. Should be a good day. Peace 